Um, he has a lot to say about the things in which culture, popular culture, and, um, and the ways in which we live um, somehow inoculate certain ways and patterns of thinking. So um, he wrote this, this small sentence, um, wrong life cannot be rightly lived, um, in, in a collection of essays or aphorisms, um, which is called Minima Moralia. It's a Latin title. And it is one of the core texts of the 1968 student revolution in Germany. And that is, of course, irrelevant. Why are we here? Well, because something is going on that is wrong. And so, wrong life cannot be rightly lived. And what do we want? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good. Um, and the Minima Moralia have a subtitle. Does anyone know that? The German original is Reflexion aus dem beschädigten Leben, Reflection from Damaged Life. Reflection from Damaged Life. Does anyone have an idea what a reflection from damaged life is? Art. Art, yes. Art is very, is, is very important in Adorno's philosophy. Um, but his idea of art is an oratic one. Does anyone know the idea of an aura, or in German, aura, A-U-R-A? -A? Where does this come from? Matt? Benjamin. Walter Benjamin. Walter <laughs> Benjamin. What does Walter Benjamin say about the aura? Do you want me to answer? Uh, it's lost <laughs> in the age of mechanical reproduction. Yes, he wrote, Walter Benjamin, he was a friend of Adorno. He was a couple of years older. He was born in... Um, 1890, and Adorno was born in 1903. And Walter Benjamin writes in a very, very um, interesting essay, which is called The Work of Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction, that the aura of the artwork is lost because it's mechanically reproduced. It's become subject to capitalist profiteering. Do we want capitalist profiteering? No! no. Good! <laughs> <laughs> but nevertheless, um, we're where um, Adorno was a cultural pessimist, Benjamin um, was much more positive. Although he had to kill himself in Spain in 1940. There is nothing funny about it. But actually, he was, his death is quite tragic because um, he fled um, Paris and wanted to enter Spain in 1940, but the border was closed. And um, he killed himself. The next day, the checkpoint was open. And in, in another essay on photography, he writes that um, the aura of the artwork is lost, but nevertheless, new films, uh, new, new technologies um, like film, photography, and so on, can actually take on, in a much more democratic and open way, in a space like this, um, the function that you was um, previously reserved for um, um, yeah, a bourgeois or upper middle class audience. So art had a bourgeois bias. Now, by way of mechanical reproduction, the aura, the very special quality of the artwork would be lost. But nevertheless, the new technologies of reproduction that was Benjamin mm -hmm. told could take on that function. Adorno was much more pessimistic about this because his idea of, of art was oratic or related to the aura and it was inevitably lost um, in, in reproducing and especially mechanically reproducing the artwork. And um, the interesting thing about Adorno is that he really believed in a quasi-religious way that some works of art have something to say about the world and, and why do they have to say something about the world? I mean, why? I mean, the, the picture is in the Louvre. The sculpture is somewhere in the gallery. These, these works of art are in, in ivory towers. Why, why would they have to do something with the real world or with the real world? Why? Is there a way that works of art are being related to what we're doing here? What? Where is the connection between the real world and, and art. Actually, 
I have to go back to Benjamin. Um, Benjamin believes that in, in the smallest things around us, um, well, yeah, Benjamin believes that the smallest things around us actually have a life of their own. The whisper of things. And the whisper of things is the promise of a better future, of a better life. And um, I think Adorno thought that was crap, but implicitly he was influenced by that. So works of art for him carry a certain truth. And by examining these works of art, um, we, can, we can actually plumb the depth of what we are um, entangled in. So in other words, reading a work of art, uh, reading a piece of literature, looking at, at wonderfully painted pictures and so on, he familiarizes our, our usual pattern in which we perceive the world. And thus, um, the art, and especially critiquing works of art, is an incredibly important business. And um, who's actually doing a humanities degree? Most of us, I guess. So are we, you know, an elite that goes to university um, and we send the taxpayer our bills? No, we're not. Um, do we have to say something about the world? Yes. Yeah. Yes, in what ways? Can you elaborate on that with regard to what I've just talk, um, said about art? How can we actually go to think about, yeah? Um, what is, what is 